Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Saturday, October 14th. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The Purdue game is today, the game against Michigan in 42 days. Boy, oh boy, six weeks away from today. That is that is coming way too soon. College football, we're already about halfway through the regular season. Buckeyes will uh, play game number three in the Big Ten schedule, playing at Purdue today. Joined by Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. We'll, we'll be at that game Kicks off at noon on Peacock, so get your streaming services ready uh, if you want to watch that one. Let's, I guess, start with the forecast, Kevin. Shout, rain showers in the afternoon, early afternoon, temperatures in the 50s, winds like 10 miles an hour. It sounds like it might, you know, this is not going to be a Chamber of Commerce day, but it doesn't sound like the kind of game, you know, weather that's going to materially impact this game. No, it's not going to be like 2018 where... It said on the book, I mean, it was 37 degrees, it was rainy, and the, it said wind, I think it's 17, but it was 30 and 40 mile an hour gusts. It's not going to be maybe the cleanest track, especially playing on grass when you kind of wonder about drainage and things of that type. But uh, anybody who's saying that it, it's going to be hugely impactful, I think maybe overstating things a little bit. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, really didn't look like at any point it was ever higher than 50% at any given hour in the hour by hour, but we also know not necessarily to trust the weather forecast as you can look at a radar screen, see nothing, look outside, and it's raining. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. Weatherman, am I right? Yes. So let's talk about uh, other folks that are, you know, have been doing their job in a sort of hit and miss kind of way at times this year, the off Ohio State offensive line. Buckeyes... This is not a great Purdue defense in terms of the run. They, they have consistently given up four and a half, five, give up six yards a carry, 6.2 yards per carry almost to Syracuse this year. This feels like Ohio State expecting Travion Henderson to be back this week. This feels like this could be a at least some kind of a get-right game for the Ohio State offensive line in terms of establishing the run, moving the ball consistently on the ground. Is this, you know, I, I don't know if that means that the problem is solved if they're, if they're running for five and a half yards of carry against Purdue, but I think it would be a concern if they are at 3.8 yards of carry or something like that against this team today. Right. Uh, Purdue's giving up uh, 153.8 yards per game, 85th in the nation. But on the other side, Purdue has 18 sacks and 39 TFLs. I think it is a defense, it is the least productive defense to have those types of numbers, but Ryan Walters is a defensive-minded coach. He was the DC at Illinois before getting the head coaching job at Purdue. He does some unique things, has some certain looks out there, has a deep single high safety, will even try to confuse you as the ball is snapped. I mean, with I mean, there's no pre-rotation or anything like that. So there will be, you know, there will be some things that Ohio State will have to recognize and solve. And we are talking about a team that has struggled mightily in the first quarter. Uh, hopefully Ohio State has been able to kind of go out, see some things. You have whatever it is, six games of tape when it comes to Purdue to kind of go through. And we know that you're always going to get new wrinkles and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, this is not going to be one of the more formidable defenses, in my opinion, just based on the fact that Ryan Walters has only had this season. I mean, and it takes time. It takes time to get your dudes in and everything else. And a couple of key departures in the defense due to injuries, probably going to keep Purdue a little bit more base because they're going to be guys that aren't that haven't done this on this level. Well, and this is not necessarily a game that Purdue is looking at as, oh boy, we have a real chance to steal one here. Especially, as you mentioned, they've got guys banged up on both sides of the ball, and we'll get to the offense in a minute. But you know, this is this is also a team first year for Ryan Walters. You go back to last year, the Ohio State defense, they're doing a lot more stuff this year than they did last year, just because the first year you're just trying to get up to speed. The second year, okay, now you've got you've got all these guys back, you've got all you know, a lot more time, you've got a lot more time to get stuff installed. So yeah, you, you it's probably not going to be the single most complex defense, but as you said, not a lot of pre rotation. So that, that picture sometimes changes for the quarterback after the snap, so that'll be an interesting challenge for Kyle McCord. Another potential challenge for Kyle McCord might not be having Mecca Abuka on Saturday. He hurt his leg last week during the game against Maryland. I, they have not released the availability report, so we'll find this out at 10 o'clock on Saturday. I'm expecting him to be on there as either a game-time decision or maybe just out. 
there is certainly an argument to just hang, hold him out and just have him get well with Penn State on deck. With Noel Mekabuka, if there is Noel Mekabuka, how would that potentially change things for the Ohio State offense? Yeah, you certainly lose probably one of the best receivers in the nation. I mean, he just happens to be mentioned as the number two at Ohio State because of who the number one is. But does that put more pressure on Marvin Harrison Jr.? Are you able to bracket him a little bit more? I mean, Ohio State does not have a shortage of receivers. We haven't necessarily seen a deep rotation this year. Um, I think you're still going to see, obviously, Marvin. You're still going to see Julian. Could this be a Xavier Johnson type of situation? I think that he might get the first look. Could Carnell Tate? Could could we see a debut of, of Brandon Ennis? Could we see them do a little bit more of a 12, one back, two tights with G. Scott Jr. and have him out there as a little bit more of a pass catcher? We already know that Cade Stover really appears to be a good safety net for Kyle McCord out there. There are a lot of different ways that Ohio State could attack this and approach this. I think when it comes to a Mecca, I think you I think you list them as questionable or whatever that status is, mm-hmm. uh, dress them and have it kind of uh, we're gonna we're gonna hold on to your helmet for now. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's an emergency. Break the glass at yeah. that point. But yeah. uh, you know if, if if it ends up becoming an emergency, uh, a mecca status is probably the least of their concerns. Yeah, and you know one thing that will probably I think we're all expecting to keep it from being an emergency is the fact that the Ohio State defense is substantially, substantially, substantially better than the last time Ohio State played at ross Aid Stadium and gave up 49 points. This year, Jim Knowles, that defense, they have, no one has cracked 20 on them this year. And they've played some halfway decent offenses and still held Maryland to 17 and Notre Dame to 14. This Purdue offense, you've got a transfer quarterback, Hudson Card from uh, Texas, 63.6% uh, completions. Seven yards per attempt, six touchdowns, five interceptions. Like, it's fine, but there's not, those are not blow-you-away numbers by any means. Devin Mockaby, starting running back, 4.3 yards per carry, four touchdowns. Again, fine, good, solid player. Not, you know, this is, this is not vintage Ricky Williams or vintage Barry Sanders or anything like that. This is much more in line with kind of, more, you know, kind of the Maryland ground game last week. And uh, they're going to be potentially a little shorthanded in that run game as well. Right, with no Tyrone Tracy, who I really feel was kind of emerging as their number one back. I mean, Tracy and Maccabi are a 1-1-A type of situation. They have a younger back as well, who I think is going to see more run with no Tyrone Tracy. But uh, Tracy really had started coming along the last couple of games, and now to lose him, that is a big hit for them. Uh, with Graham Harrell as the offensive coordinator, it's an air raid, but it's an air raid that is runs a little slower and is a little more welcome, welcoming to the run. Um, Devin Mockaby puts the ball on the ground a decent amount, and it it really can kind of be hit or miss with them as well. So I think Purdue is in trouble in terms of what its running game is going to be. And then obviously with Hudson Card, he he may be 63.3 or 6, whatever that was, but the numbers I look at, six touchdowns, five interceptions. He's been a little intercepty in his career. And Ohio State coming off of a couple picks, I think that those DBs are going to be jumping routes, really with only one major target, in my opinion, on the on the pass catchers, and that's Deion Burks. And that's no disrespect to TJ Sheffield, but Sheffield has been a lot of underneath stuff. B- Burks is kind of their, their big threat, and I think we're going to see some really good battles with, with him and uh, – a guy that we yeah. that we're very used to seeing Burks on Burke. Yeah, Bur- yeah, Burks on Burke violence or vice versa. Yeah, Burke sixteen and a half yards per reception this year. Um, Abdur Rahman Yashin uh, thirteen point two, and then Sheffield eleven point eight. So yeah, if you if there is going to be be a big play, probably Burks four touchdown receptions for him, uh, only two for the other guys on the team. So that'll uh, that kind of covers the covers the broad strokes of this game. Tony Gerderman and I did a much deeper dive on the game. Uh, some of Ohio State's upcoming opponents answered a bunch of uh, viewer questions on the Buckeye Weekly podcast. Did a special live episode of that on Friday afternoon, so you can find that at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle as well. Uh, Kevin, I guess let's let's end this with, with game predictions. You and I, you know, we didn't plan this out. You and I and Tony, we, we all ended up kind of in the same basic neighborhood here. Yeah, we seem to at least agree with what it is we expect to see, whether or not that's the way the game goes. That remains close. I mean, I I was a point off against Maryland, but, 
you know, I, I it, it is what it is. I, I mean, I'm not taking too many victory laps. I don't have to sleep on the cot of shame, so I'm happy enough with that. But uh, 35-10, Ohio State. I think that we'll start with a 10 of Purdue. I think that, you know, they'll hit a, a big play or two. I think they'll prolong a drive or two along the way. I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball all that much. I think that Deion Burks, as we talked about, he may get loose on something just in terms of maybe Ohio State gets a little too aggressive or whatever. You just, you just never know. As for Ohio State, I think Ohio State's going to see a couple more offensive drives in this game than others because I think Purdue will stall out a decent amount. But until I see Ohio State convert on more than four or five scoring drives, I can't. I can't in good conscience pick anything above 35. I guess if they went for two every time, I guess uh, then I could do 40. But until until I see it in a, in a game of any sort of consequence, I just can't take myself over 35. Yeah, my prediction is this will not be the game where Ohio State burns m- multiple uh, good two-point plays. Not expecting that on Saturday. Uh, I had the Buckeyes winning 31-17. The longer we talk about this game, the more I talk myself into. I might be a little high on Purdue and a little low on Ohio State. We'll see. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I just I kind of need to see it. I need to see the run game hit. If they if they're running for five and a half six yards of carry, I think that's going to be a very encouraging sign for them heading into that Penn State game in a week. With Purdue being turnover prone, you could end up with some short fields. You could end up with a you know a scoop and soar, a pick six, whatever that that makes that you know bumps that number up by seven or ten or fourteen points or something like that. But yeah, it, it, this feels like a game that's probably going to be. A little bit annoying. It, Ohio State at Purdue never goes the way that Ohio State fans want it to. It just, even when they win, it's generally not super inspiring. So we'll uh, we'll be keeping an eye on all that kind of stuff for you. We will have the uh, pregame uh, update on the availability report, injury report, status of Mecca Abuka, and anyone else on that report coming to you at 10 a.m. at youtubecom slash Huddle. Tony Gerdman and I'll do that show from Ross Aid Stadium. Once we get there, get all set up. Get that availability report in. We will get that out for you. So you can look for that at 10 a.m. And the best way to make sure you don't miss that or anything else we do during the course of the day is by subscribing at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle, hitting that bell so you get notified. If you're not sure if, you've been, if you're subscribed or you're not sure if you, if you uh, have hit that bell before, go ahead and do it again. Doesn't, doesn't hurt anything. Make sure you're, uh, make sure you're getting all, all of our stuff because we will have the pregame show. We'll uh, have our usual postgame show as soon as the clock hits zero. And as soon as that clock hits zero, it is Penn State week. And boy, that is going to be potentially a very big game in Columbus, Ohio, a week from now. So a lot of exciting stuff coming and a great place to uh, spend the next week or so would be at BuckeyeHuddle.com where we'll have coverage of that game. A bunch of recruiting news happening this week. Potentially more recruiting news happening over the weekend. Plus uh, lots of uh, good scheme coverage, lots of good X's and O's coverage from Ross Fulton and Devin and Justin, our whole team of... Uh, of X's and O's guys all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later.